In this video, we're briefly going to talk about the second partials test. So it's a multivariable equivalent of the second derivative test from calculus. So we're going to find maximums, minimums uh, for functions of two variables. So second partials test. Partials test. So here is the setup. So f here has to have uh, continuous partial derivatives uh, in some open region. So f has continuous, one of the assumptions, partial derivatives, derivatives, and some open region, and some open region containing uh, our ordered pair AB. So containing A comma B. So parentheses A comma B. For which, and you have to have uh, the following. So basically your uh, first partial derivatives have to be zero at AB. So F sub X at AB has to be equal to zero. And uh, the partial with respect to y at a, b also has to be equal to 0. So when you're using the second partials test, your first step, you'll see we'll do an example shortly, is you just take the first derivatives and you set them both equal to 0 and you solve. That's how you get your a, b. After you do that, you consider the following matrix, or rather the following determinant. So consider the determinant, which I'll call little d, of the following matrix. We're going to look at fxx, so the second partial derivative with respect to x at a, b. And then here we have fxy at a, b. Then here we have fyx at a, b. And then here we have fyy. Really easy to memorize this matrix uh, at a, b. It's not so bad. Um, you have fxx and fyy in the diagonal. And then you have mixed partials everywhere else. Usually the mixed partials will be equal because everything here is continuous and nice. So, And then you compute the determinant. So um, it's going to be this minus this. right? You multiply. So it would be uh, fxx uh, at ab, fyy at ab. And again, the mixed partials should be the same. So you just end up squaring these. So minus, uh, and then I'll use a bracket here, fxy at a b squared. So we have this this creature which we'll call little d. So again, step one, you take these partials, set them equal to zero, which we'll do shortly. Then you compute little d. Then you have the following cases. So you just use this this, this uh, test and it gives you the answers. So case one. So case one. First case is a nice case. Uh, it's when little d is equal to zero. I'm sorry, greater than zero. And um, the second partial with respect to x, f x x at a b. This guy here is positive. So if this happens, then you have a min at a comma b. So you have a min at a b. This should be very reminiscent of the second derivative test from calculus. Remember in calculus, if the second derivative was positive, you had a min. If it's negative, you have a max. It's the same thing here. It's like if it's positive, it's backwards. You have a min. Two, if little d is positive. So little d has to be positive for both of these conditions. And then fxx at a, b is less than 0, then we have a max at a, b. So max, max at a, b. OK, so again, the way I memorize it is it's backwards. Um, so uh, just really easy trick. So positive min, negative max. 3, here's where it gets interesting. Uh, if little d is less than 0, uh, you have what's called a saddle point. So there's no min or max. You have a, a saddle point. It looks like a horse's saddle. That's why it's called a saddle point. So in 3D, it will actually look like a horse saddle. So saddle point at um, A, B, F of A, B. So there's no max, nor min. No max, nor min. And uh, 4, uh, if you have uh, D equals 0, then there is no info, so no information. All right, that's it. That's the second partials test. Let's go ahead and do a simple example. I wrote one down here. I haven't done it, uh, but I picked it because it looks easy. So let's try it. 
just an easy example to illustrate the test. So we have to find all relative extrema, so all maxes, mins, and possible saddle points uh, or saddle points of this function. So f of x, y, and this is equal to uh, x squared plus y squared uh, plus 6x, so plus 6x, uh, minus 12y, so minus 12y, and then pl uh, minus, minus 3, so minus, minus 3. Okay, and so solution. So the first thing we have to do is uh, take the partials and set them equal to 0 to find uh, our a and our b. So we have f sub x, that's the partial derivative of, x, of f with respect to x. So all of the y's, when we differentiate those, those are 0, because we're taking the partial with respect to x, so we treat those as constants. This will be 2x uh, plus 6, I believe, right, because everything else is 0. Right? The derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 6x is 6, yep, everything else is 0. So you set this equal to 0. Right away, you get an answer here, right? Subtract 6, um, so you get 2x equals negative 6. So x equals negative 3. That was pretty easy. So we have x equals negative 3. I'm going to put that in a box. Let's look at fy. It's going to be 2y uh, minus 12, I believe, right? Because the derivative of x squared is 0. The derivative of y squared is 2y. The derivative of 6x is 0. Yeah, and the derivative of negative 12y is negative 12. Everything looks good. Set this equal to, set this equal to 0. So 2y equals 12. So y equals 6. So we have our, our point here, AB. This is called the critical point, by the way. It's called the critical point. Uh, I remember in, in Calc 1, they're called uh, critical numbers. Okay, so a critical number in Calc 1 was a number where the derivative was undefined or um, zero. So it was a number in the domain of the function where the derivative was undefined or zero. Here, a critical point is an ordered pair in the domain of the function where the first partials are zero or uh, the first partials are undefined. So in this case, uh, all you do is you take these, set them equal to zero, and boom, there we have it. Okay, that's our a and our b. Okay, that's our a and our b. So now all we have to do is compute the other partials. Let's look at fxx. That's just going to be two, right? Because the derivative of 2x is two, uh, the derivative of six is zero. And then fyy, that's also just two, right? The derivative of 2y is zero. The derivative of negative 12 is, oh, sorry, the derivative of 2y is 2, the derivative of negative 12 is, is 0. What about the mixed partials, fxy? So we're looking at fx and we're taking the partial with respect to y, so that's just going to be 0. Likewise, if we do fyx, we also get 0. And we expected that because everything is continuous, so they should be the same. All right, so now we compute little d. So little d, little d is the determinant of the matrix. Uh, f, f, x, x at negative 3, 6, right? Then we had, I believe it was f, x, y at negative 3, 6. Then here we had f, uh, y, x at negative 3, 6. Now the negative 3 and the 6, uh, they don't even, they don't even matter here too much, I think. Let's see. Um, well, they won't matter for, um, no, they won't matter at all. Right, they won't matter at all because all of these are second derivatives. And look, th these are independent of x and y. Uh, so then we have f, y, y, uh, negative 3, 6. But I'll write it as a formality because sometimes it does matter. So f, x, x was here. So that's going to be 2. So this is 2. f, x, y uh, is 0. f, y, x is 0. f, y, y is 2. So we get 2 times 2, right, this times this, minus 0 times 0. Just trying to show all the steps. So you get 4. Okay, so you get 4. Then we're supposed to look at fxx, right? So, so d is 4, and that's bigger than 0. Okay, so be really formal here. And then fxx at negative 3, 6 is equal to 2, and that's greater than 0. So we know it runs backwards. So you have a min at the point negative 3, 6 by the second partials test. So both of these conditions tell us that we have a min at this point. To find the actual minimum value, you have to plug these into the original function. So let's do that. So f of negative 3, 6. I don't know if you can see it. It's way up at the top of the screen here. So, so x squared is going to be negative 3 squared plus 6 squared. That's y plus 6 times x, so 6 times negative 3, 
minus uh, 12 times y, 12 times 6, minus 3. I think I have a calculator here. Yeah, I do. And I'm just going to type it in. So it'll be 9 plus 36 minus 18 minus 12 times 6. Just why not be safe? Okay, negative 48. So that's the actual minimum value. That's the minimum value, uh, min value. In most math classes, they ask for the point where the min occurs. So uh, if you're taking a math class or something, typically the answer would look something like this. Negative 3, negative 6, negative 48. So this is where the min occurs. This is where we have a min occurs. Min occurs at this point in space. The actual minimum value is negative 48. Well, that's it. I hope this video uh, has been helpful to someone out there in the world.